Hello again, and welcome back to these videos with Teacher Kent coming at you. So these videos in this series is British English versus American English. I'm an American teacher from America. I've taught in Japan 20 years in college in Japan, and uh, I have my own Ikawa school here, my English school. So, of course, if you're following along, so far we've done uh, vocabulary, British versus American. And in the second video, we did uh, prepositions, British versus American. And in this video, I'll do spelling, British versus American spellings. So please stay tuned uh, to learn all the differences. There'll be nine differences I'll cover in this video. So but before that, don't forget to give us a like below and subscribe to these videos so that we know you're enjoying them and comment too and share them with your friends and family so more people can learn English quicker, our motto. So of course, today I'm going to teach you about the differences in the spelling. And I found this great uh, web page from collinsdictionary.com. There's some other ones in Webster's Dictionary or um, Oxford Dictionary. I've looked at those as well. But some common uh, nine differences between British and American English in spelling. So while we, uh, what's the quote I used in the last video I did about the series? Oscar Wilde said, uh, America and uh, America and England were two countries separated by a common language. So, we're, so even though it's a common language, it's uh, separating us both. So let's see, we'll go through these. These are not in my favorite order, but I'll go through them as the order. I'll list this web page on the comments below, but we'll go through them in this order. A, E versus E. In the first difference, in a, you can see in ancient Greece, they use A, E in British English, but only E in American English. American English changed little by little. Webster, uh, the famous Webster's Dictionary, he had a big impact on changing how English is written. He tried to get it closer to how we speak it. Back in the 1800s in America, lots of versions. We had British versions, American versions, country versions, city versions. We had lots of versions of how words were written. And he wanted to standardize that by how do Americans typically pronounce a word? Let's spell it like that. So that's uh, in fact uh, in impacted here. For example, uh, we have uh, uh, aesthetic, for example, the second one here. And uh, you can see in British English, aesthetic so aesthetic so without the a then of course doubled consonants the second area mostly uh it'll explain here but mostly you can see how it's different for example you hear sometimes British English have the double consonant and other places u.s has double consonant but mostly yeah you can see for example a, a policy carburetor counselor this is a famous one american english you can see one l versus the british is two l uh, let's see, distill, we have here two L's in American English, enroll, two L's in American English, uh, two L's for fulfill, yeah, usually two L's for American English, installment is a great one, with one L for British, and skillful, you can say one L. The third part, of course, E-N-C-E -E versus E-N-S-E, -E. you can say many nouns are C-E in British English and S-E in American English, we'll come to this later. Uh, S versus Z. This is also a difference in American English. For example, the word license. Uh, license, I want to do something after which they hold a license to do it. Yes, so of course, the SE license will be American English. So you can see underneath here some examples. Yes, defense, license, offense, pretense, all with an S. And the British one, uh, defense, license, offense, pretense, almost same pronunciation. Uh, well, I should say British pronunciation, but C. The pronunciation is not the big issue. It's how to spell it in this video. Let's see, the final e. This is not as common. The notice, but for example, annex. You can see annex. Another famous one here is program, where we say TV program. You can say P R O G R A M, but in British English we would say uh, P R O G R A M M E. So. With an M at the end, we usually add M-E, program. And you can see some examples here of X versus X. So American X, so is without an E, and British is with an E. And judgment, of course, American English, no E, and British is with an E. Sometimes you see both in America, but mostly without the E. O-E versus E, of course, the word diarrhea, you can see here, uh, where it's spelled, the pronounced basically the same way, but spelled H-O-E-A versus American diarrhea, H-E-A. Of course, it's from classical languages where they use the O-E to spell how it's spelled in the 
diagram, of course, of how words are pronounced. Next one, and you see this a big area, number six here, is O-U-R versus O-R. Most common example here is color. Uh, you can see down in this list color. America, we spell it, of course, C-O-L-O-R. British is C-O-L-O-U-R. So anything with an O-R is usually U-R. Behavior, you can see the differences. Behavior, uh, candor, clamor, uh, demeanor, favor. Uh, favor is another famous example. Uh, flavor, flavor of food, honor, humor. Yeah, sometimes you'll see both. In a more formal setting in America, British is considered more formal English in America. So more formal setting, you might see humor. Mm -hmm. Spelled like this with an O-U-R instead of an O-R. Savor, yes. Uh, some rumor. Mm. So remember to notice that when you're spelling differences. Then number seven here, E-R. I uh, sorry, R-E versus E-R. Sorry, I should say with the O-U-R and the R-E versus E-R, this is from French influence. America has much less French influence on our language. That's why our spellings are E-R and O-R. But if you have the French fluence, you have O-U-R from the French and the R-E. So America is mostly more Germanic influence. So you can see some famous differences here. The most famous, I guess, center is very famous. Theater at the bottom is very famous. Movie theater in America will be E-R. And in a British movie theater will be R-E. Uh, but sometimes when we talk about like Broadway plays, we might use the R-E, again, because it's more formal. Broadway theater, we might, you might see sometimes written like this with the R-E. But of course, and then center, of course, town center, E-R at the top here, the uh, second one, and British town center, you can see it's different, or litter, uh, sorry, uh, liter of something, versus E-R versus R-E, sorry, meter, of course, E-R versus R-E. And then the last part here, uh, not last part, eight, eighth part, I-Z-E versus I-S-E. This is similar to earlier I said the, up here. The S and versus the, yes, here. The C-E versus the S-E. Let's see, so back down here. One of the most common things like civilized. Civilized, of course, in America, you have to say only with the Z-E. But as it learned here, I didn't know this, but I, I noticed the difference. I always knew the difference in British English. But of course, civilized, S-E. Uh, is usually used, but not always. As it explains here, if you read it, many British people use both, the Z-E verse and the S-E. But S-E, it says, is more common. Uh, some people use it, but it's a convention, not a rule. So, but below here, these are rules, where you see analyze and paralyze is only acceptable in, in American English. But for British English, it will be analyzed and paralyzed with an S-E, not a Z-E. So those are differences. So more common Z-E, uh, sorry, S-E above in England, but I guess because of all of our TV shows and movies influencing them, that they also use Z-E as well. The last part is interesting, nine, and this explains exactly uh, about Noah Webster's, Webster's Dictionary. There's two famous dictionaries in the world of English, Oxford from England, from the US England, and Webster's in America. As an American, I use Webster's Dictionary since I was very young. So many spellings uh, do their existence to uh, Noah Webster spelling reforms, which sought to simplify spelling and bring it closer to a common American pronunciation. So how Americans produce. Aeroplane is a great example here. If I pronounce this as I saw it, I was an aeroplane. And some maybe Americans used to say that. So airplane, we, sh we made it like how Americans were saying. They're saying instead of aero, they're saying airplane. Okay. Artifact. Uh, of course, the next one. Artifact, maybe artifact, yes. And check, I can't pronounce the, the British spelling of this, but check. Uh, checku, checku maybe. But America, of course, check. And then checker board, you can see. So exactly, checkered, cozy, donut. So you might see both in America. Uh, actually, we'll see a lot of both. But the most common casual spelling of donut is D O N U T. It's how we pronounce it. Whereas donut, donut, would be much longer, donut versus donut. So, of course, how Americans pronounce it, how we spell it. Draft is another good example. Jail, gray. We talked about colors already. So, gray color, the color word would be, of course, British. 
uh, L-O-U-R in America, L-O-R. So gray and also gray is misspelled. So be careful. And let's see. Uh, and by the way, be careful of gray spelling in general. In, in Japan, as I've been working a long time, a lot of people misspell gray with an L, G-L-A-Y. Of course, a misspelled pronunciation. Jewelry, of course, this connects to the L versus two L's thing earlier. Curb, plow, yes, and skeptical. Uh, you can see that's a common one with a K in America and C in British. And sulfur, the last one, sulfur. Uh, it's interesting because pharmacy, we've kept the PH in pharmacy. Any PH in English is pronounced with an F. So that's a pharmacy. If you look at Spanish, it's spelled with a, in Spanish, it's, it's pronounced similar, but it's spelled with a F instead of a PH. In American English, yes, PH and F have the same sound. So sulfur, sulfur, these actually have the same sound. But it's interesting, we use the spelling on the right. But for pharmacy, we use the spelling on the left, which will be PH. Okay, hopefully you learned a lot of spelling today. <laughs> so please practice. Remember to write them down and use them in your everyday life. So, and please watch the other videos of the vocabulary ones and the preposition ones. I also will in the future do maybe a pronunciation one. That'll be harder for me because I can't pronounce Japanese, British words maybe. And I will do definitely a grammar one maybe in the future because grammar is a lot different too. Okay, thank you for watching again. Please subscribe here and watch some other teaching videos up here. And over here, we have some popular videos on our channel. So please watch them. And until tomorrow, have a good day. See you in tomorrow's lesson. See you.